Good morning, book lovers. This is Robert Boyd with a, another book review. I know I just did one uh, yesterday or a couple days ago, but I read a book pretty quickly, um, and uh, it was much easier than the last one. Time of the Magicians was was a slog. German philosophy, tricky at the best of times. Um, but this one is a very short book by... Cesar Ira, he's an Argentine writer, and this book is titled Art Forum. It's a bunch of, uh, it's a, a group of short stories, a very short group of short stories. It's only 82 pages long. And um, I'm not really sure if these are fictional or not. Um, I assume they are at least partly fictional. But I think uh, it really is about his his obsession with collecting issues of art form the art magazine and uh and that some of them are probably more or less true um so uh art form is published here in the united states but uh it's read all around the world including buenos aires where cesar ira lives and um he um he was born in a Colonel Pringles, uh, although when I read it, I, I saw Colonel Pringles, which would be a hilarious name for a town. Uh, I, I looked that up. Uh, Colonel Pringles was a historical figure in, in Argentina, um, but it, he, he describes it in one of the stories as a, um, as a uh, provincial town where, uh, you know, any culture you grab, you grab quick. And you got out of town quickly, which he did, apparently. Um, and he is obviously interested in contemporary art, but the actual content of contemporary art barely intrudes into any of these stories. He has one story about um, uh, clothes pens that keep breaking in his house because when uh, his wife does, when he or his wife do the laundry, they hang the clothes up in a a line in a spare bedroom in the house um, to dry and the clothespins start breaking inexplicably one day and uh, he mentions uh, the Klaus Oldenburg clothespin, the, the enormous architectural size clothespin. But that's pretty much the only time. The rest of the time he's talking about art form as a um, kind of a luxury item that he enjoys. As a successful writer, he can afford any number of copies of art form. Um, but because it's, you know, an expensive American magazine, to get it in Buenos Aires, you have to kind of hunt it down. And at one point, he finally gives up the, the hunt and um, gets a subscription. But even that is not without its, its pitfalls. For me... The pleasure of this book is the fact that uh, art form is an object that uh, is, is kind of fantastic. And I, I used to have a lot of issues, but the problem with them is that they're, they're big, they're printed on heavy, glossy paper, and moving them is a pain in the butt. And after a while you realize, okay, why am I holding on to old magazines? It seems like kind of a, a hoarderish thing to do. But no, I, I have kept a couple because they were, um, they, they discussed, they were retrospectives of the 80s, which is when I first started reading the magazine. And I like the, the spine of art form, where it's got like a color and then a white bar. But if you get like the whole year of that, of that particular year, you'll see the color starts small and gets longer each month. So they look really handsome on your bookshelf. Um, and that, uh, you can see that pattern with the colors and the white bar is reproduced on the cover. And, um, there's one story where he, uh, he discusses, um, how a friend of his tells him that, um, a certain used bookstore in Argentina has just come into a huge quantity of back issues of art form. And he wants to go over there right away to pick through them. And he's worried that if he waits too long, they'll um, they'll be snatched up by by other contemporary art lovers in the city. 
And uh, the interesting thing is is that um, the the magazine seemed to come from a um, at least in the story from the estate of a uh, Ruth Benzikar. And Ruth Benzikar was a real person, and she owned a gallery in uh, in Buenos Aires. And um, and it I, I guess it's still going, although I suspect since he wrote the story, she's probably dead. And uh, I've been to Buenos Aires a couple of times myself, and I'm pretty sure, and this was a long time ago, so my memory might be playing tricks on me, but uh, I'm pretty sure that um, I went to the Ruth Benzegar Gallery, which for me is kind of interesting because at that time I had, I had, I had hardly ever gone to galleries before. I started going um, I, commercial like art galleries in in um, in cities, and I, I I'm a a very regular attendee of galleries. I like I like going to them. I, I think they're great environments to look at art. And I realize there's a inherent problematic thing with the proverbial white cube, um, but I like art galleries. Um, and, uh, but as a, uh, college student in, uh, Houston, I didn't, I didn't go to art galleries. I just didn't know about them. I mean, I knew they existed, but I didn't really know what they were for. I mean, I knew the idea behind them, but I just didn't know what, what they had to do with art. Um, and I, I regret that because a lot of great Houston artists were showing art in Houston galleries in the eighties. While I was a student, and I could have seen them, um, so I really started going to galleries when I um, when I worked overseas. I was working in Africa, and I'd go to London every now and then. And uh, you know, I go to museums and stuff. I I loved going to museums, but I wanted to. I I knew there were artists that I had read about in places like Art Forum that I wanted to see, and uh, and I pick up a copy of Time Out and I'd see that they're in commercial galleries and I'd figure out how to get there because I don't know my way around London and uh, I'd, I'd go see them and that was very pleasurable but then I, I started working at, I stopped working in Africa I started working in Brazil and I made a fair I, a couple trips down to Argentina and, and Buenos Aires and while I was in Buenos Aires I also checked out the local gallery scene and uh, I think that's when I, I stumbled across Ruth Benzikar's gallery. Um, and I, I guess I probably could have seen Cesar Ira there if I, I probably, I, I possibly did see Cesar Ira there. Anyway, Ira is a uh, important Argentine writer. Uh, I've, I've read most of one of his other books, Shantytown, and it's sort of sitting on my too complete pile. Um, but this book, I, I happen to be at, at uh, my local bookstore, Brazos Bookstore. They had just literally just reopened to the public uh, that day, so I happened to walk in, and uh, and um, I, w I had ordered a book from them, and I was there to pick it up, and I saw this book on the shelf, and I I said, "Wow, that's great! A book about art form, about one of my favorite magazines," and it turned out to be funny and an enjoyable and a very quick read um, about a man's obsession with this this object and he 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 uh, he he makes a point that not only does he love it but he's he's thinking maybe it loves him and that's a, uh, a, a he that steps him down on an aside about whether or not objects can love you and I found that amusing anyway that's my report for today thanks very much